guys, Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional. I just wanted to take a moment to say happy Father's Day to y'all. Tomorrow is Father's Day, and uh, I just pray a special blessing over your day. Um, I had an awesome dad. Of course, dad went on to be with the Lord several years ago, about 15 years ago. But guess what? Even in dad's absence, I still have a father that is alive and, and with me every day. Of the, uh, every day. And um, the Bible says that God will never leave us or forsake us. But here in Psalm chapter 68, verse 5, it says, A father of the fatherless, a defender of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. So I have a God that is a God to the fatherless. Dad went home to be with the Lord, but guess what? I still have a God that cares. I still have a father, a daddy, that is still part of my life. Amen. Look in Galatians chapter 4, and it says, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So what Jesus did at Calvary has caused his spirit to take up residency within us. And because of that relationship, you and I can call on God, Father God, as Daddy God. We can have a personal intimate relationship with Almighty God as a dad, as a father. Amen. Goes on to say, therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then heir of God through uh, Jesus Christ. Now it also says in Romans chapter 8, it says that his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children of God, then heir to the throne of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but that just sets me free, gets me excited about Father's Day. Be sure and take time today to, to just enjoy Father God, but also your, your earthly fathers too. Once again, all of us here at Tack Room Devotional say, Happy Father's Day to you. Have a blessed day. Hey guys, Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional, and we went back to the to the uh, round pin this week, we went back to the basics of Christianity. We uh, studied some of the foundations. Well, first of all, this is just the beginning of a series that we're going to do here about the foundations of Christianity. This one was on the Bible. Okay, the Bible, the Word of God. We first of all found out that the Bible is the inspired Word of God. It's not the Word of some men or some interpretation from men, but it's inspired by God Himself. Amen? Through the unction of the Holy Spirit. We found out that uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Watch this, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's how powerful this book is. Amen. Um, we also found out that the Holy Spirit is the author the single author, he used men to write it down, but the Holy Spirit is the author. Second of all, on Tuesday we found out it's a difficult book for a natural man to understand. Because the natural man, this comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, the natural man cannot discern spiritual things. So if you are not born again, you say, well what is born again? That's a, a giving of yourself to Christ, making him the Lord of your life, accepting the things that he did at Calvary for you. The Bible says if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So first of all, you have to confess with your mouth that he is your Lord, he is your Savior. But second of all, you have to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Why is that? Because then you believe that he's living. He's alive today. And he has an influence in your life. Amen. And so when you are born again, now the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, Jesus said, I'll send you the helper who will take up residency. He is the spirit of truth. Now the spirit of truth will lead you and guide you into all truth. Well, the Bible is the word of truth. So the Holy Spirit leads leads us and guides us into all truth using the word of truth in order to instruct us. Amen. So it's not a difficult book after you're born again. Then we found out the book is a book of oneness. In other words, there's only one author, that's the Holy Spirit. The book is completely in harmony and unity all the way through from the very beginning to the very end. Now men have tried to trash it up, men have tried to put their own reasoning in there, but when you come before God with his word, you need to come with an open heart and an open mind to receive from the unction of the Holy Spirit. He will lead you and guide you. You'll find out that this book is 
is in harmony and in unity. Amen. Why? Because it only had one author, and that was the Spirit of God himself. Then we found out the Bible claims special powers. First of all, we, it says that it's living and it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Remember? Living and powerful. Remember that we said that Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So it was living there, but it's also living because it's lived out through us. As we apply it to our lives, we live out the life of Christ, and it becomes living and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword that pierces to the division of the soul and spirit, brings our soul and spirit in alignment with one another. The bone and the marrow, which speaks of the, the carnal man and the, and the spiritual man. And then finally is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's how powerful it is. And then God speaks of his word himself and he says, So shall my word be. It shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish all that it's sent out to do and prosper in those things. See, you can have confidence in the word of God. Amen. And then we found out it also had a cleansing power because we're washed by the water of the word. We found out it had reproductive power power because it's the incorruptible seed of the word of God by which men are saved. Amen. And it had a uh, uh nutrition power because it is the milk of the word but it's also the meat of the word that causes us to grow and causes us to become mature. Amen. And finally we found out that the believer must study the scripture 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. We'll read it again. Be diligent, be diligent, be diligent to present yourself present yourself unto God a worker who need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Make sure you study the scripture know it. There will be times when you're going through something in your life that you need to come before God. The Bible says, this is in Isaiah chapter 50 or 43, it says, um, call me into remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you might be acquitted. In other words, when you come to God, you call him into remembrance. Now he doesn't need to be called into remembrance, but it's for our benefit. When we have to call him into remembrance, we have to study the word. We have to be diligent to study the word of God, present ourselves unto God and say, God, but your word says this. Oh, he loves that when we do that. Why? Because it's truth and he is truth. There is no lie in him. Praise God. So we need to study. Remember that the Bible does not contain the Word of God. It is the Word from Almighty God Himself. All right, I hope you got something out of this study. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek Him and serve Him.